Hi, I'm Chaplain Larry Crabtree with the Maryland State Police and St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office. And I'm Chaplain Charlie Wharton for the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office. Well, Charlie, we've been again discussing uh, stress and whether that's cumulative stress, that chronic workplace stress, or it's the critical incidents, and we've talked about a number of different things. Uh, it might be a good idea to talk about the stress of preparing for retirement. That's something I don't think we talk about a lot. No, in fact, I think it's kind of interesting because if you talk to a law enforcement officer, they can tell you the day that they're going to retire. Only got <laughs> well, eight they, they, got, they got the clocks, right? Yeah. The countdown clock? Yeah. Yes. Only got eight years, seven yeah. months, and three days until, until I can walk out of here. But it's interesting because they know that time, but too often they're not prepared for it yeah. when it happens. And I think what we're going to talk about in this segment is going to overlap with a lot of things we've talked about in previous weeks. Um, one of those things, we don't spend a lot of time on it, is just finance. We've already talked about the stress that financially getting yourself into debt brings into a family. Well, you don't want that as you're going into retirement. So if you haven't heard about that, go back to the previous and watch those because that's significant. Police are often in financial problems. But what are some other things that law enforcement officers can do to prepare for retirement to alleviate the stressors or what should they be aware of? Now, I want to go back and, and cover something else of that financial thing really quick, okay. and that is that a lot of officers are going to be able to retire at 50 years old. True. When the rest or younger. Of the, when the rest of the world now has another 15 years. Yeah. So on one hand, law enforcement financial retirement is is pretty good, but on the other hand, they got to be prepared for it. They do. So, so, so what do they do to get prepared? What should they know? What should they be thinking about? What, and again, all this stuff has to be intentional. None of this is going to happen by itself. So what is it they intentionally need to prepare for? I think, number one, they need to have a conversation with themselves about what's going to change. When you are the police, you are the police. I mean, that is so much of that persona that we have. And at a point in time in which you turn your gun and your badge in, you become Charlie. You're no longer Officer Wharton. You become Charlie at that point. You become a citizen, a civilian at that point. And, that, and, and we've talked about making that differentiation before retirement, right? Yeah, we do. You've you got to have those two different identities, the cop and then the family. But that, this is the point in time in which you, don't, you, don't, you can't make that decision yeah. because that decision is made for you yeah. because you're going to be divorced from that part of your life. Now, will they let you back in, in, in the headquarters? They might. <laughs> but in, in all reality, even if you do get back and even if you do spend time um, hanging around the guys, you're not one of the people. You're not one of the, the ones when the, when the alarms goes off, go off, you go out and, and, and be a part of the response. You're no longer in that inner circle. Yeah, it's kind of like the old... Uh, the old Dalmatians that, you know, the retired Dalmatians from the uh, um, the, the old fire trucks, you know, when they get too old, the old Dalmatians just sit in the station house when the fancy trucks roll around. And that's kind of the way that it I is. I thought the old firemen do. That's right, exactly. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of the way that it can be with law enforcement because you're still part of the club, but you're not part of the cool club. Yeah. And that is, that can be a real challenge to people. Um, especially if the job, the, the part of the job that we liked the most was driving fast and trying to solve other people's problems because you can't drive fast anymore and most people really don't care if you solve their problems <laughs> at this point. So I think that is a huge transition. It's a huge change that people need to be aware of. Um, you're going back into the real world and what I mean by that is law enforcement is very structured. Um, you have a, a rank structure that is very comfortable to most people. Um, you have policies and procedures that are based a lot of times on law. And then you get back out into the real world where there's not a lot of policy and procedure and quite often people are not all that interested in law. I mean, you're told what you're going to wear. Exactly. How, how you wear it. I mean, all of those details. And now you, you have to make those decisions on your, on your own. Yeah. And while it might sound like a pretty fun thing to have, it, it's, it's a change. Yeah. 
quite it is quite a bit of change. Um, the time that you're around your family is going to change. You know, we were just talking about this as we were preparing for our, this discussion. There's a good chance that you know, last six months of your career, you may be working nights, twelve-hour shifts on nights, and you may not see your family during that time. Then all of a sudden, you're going to be the clod sitting on the couch, and everybody's vacuuming around you, and you can't get out of the way because where's dad been or where has mom been for the last several years and now you're trying to have to redefine who you are within the family and that will also redefine who the family is because remember they're also used to the way they do things the timing the procedures well now you're there that kind of disrupts everything very much so yeah. very much so um, I think it's important to talk to our children to our spouse to our partner about those changes and about the new normal that's going to happen. Uh, we, we've talked a lot, you, you've word, used the word purpose quite a bit during this series, and, and I think that's an excellent word because this stuff doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional, it has to be on purpose. And we need to have those conversations about what to expect. And that's why we're having the conversation to help our friends realize they have to have a purpose in this. There must be intentionality. Here are some things to consider. Exactly. Um, do you need to work again? Do you want to work again? Uh, I, I know a lot of people that will say, you know, the the uh, at my next job, the only thing I want to do is sit on a lot, riding lawnmower and ride around all day. And then all of a sudden that just gets boring after a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks. and that purpose isn't there anymore and it does have a again it can have a negative impact on our self-value and our self-worth i think another thing that's so vitally important is to develop a hobby before you need one um, i i did not do this very well i'll i'll i'll, I'll step up and and take the hit on this one um, i don't have a lot of hobbies and so when i got out of law enforcement i'm just kind of sitting around saying all right what am i going to do um, you know, I can't not work, but I really, you know, there, I haven't really honed that, that hobby skill. And so I encourage you, as you get towards that retirement age, start to find a hobby that you really enjoy. Well, you like fishing. I do. You, you do some fishing. That's I, it. It's not, you know, we're, as we're recording this, it's 118 degrees outside. <laughs> and so I need, I need a secondary hobby that's one, it's inside. Yeah, okay. So. Right, gotcha. Knitting? Um, knitting. That may be. <laughs> Maybe. I, we may cut this story out, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Um, one time I was talking about developing a hobby, and I thought, uh, you know, the great thing would be to, to make a model airplane. I thought that would be really cool. And so I started working on a model airplane, and I didn't realize there were like 500 miniature pieces to this model airplane. So I started working on the, the model, and putting it together and it went okay for a while and then Jeannie made me put the newspaper out on the table so I didn't get the glue on the table and the glue would stick to my fingers which would stick to the newspaper which I would pick up and I have you know then there would be all these pieces and I put one on backwards and I have to take it off and put it back on and we had all this decal and after about two days I was more stressed than I was at the beginning but I kept trying and kept trying and eventually I just you know it just overwhelmed me and I finally picked up a partially built model airplane and I realized two things. Number one, it will fly for a little bit. And the second thing is when it hit the wall, it goes into the same number of pieces you started out with in the beginning. The point to that story is you need to find a hobby that is fit for you. Yeah, amen. Plus, you were probably inhaling a lot of fumes. I was, I was. <laughs> that was not helpful. That may have been why it lasted a couple of weeks for me inhaling those fumes. Well, Charlie, I think something that um, is pertinent to preparing for retirement, I think, wouldn't it be health? Uh, so let's talk a little bit about your health, your, your physical stamina and preparedness for that. What, what are some helpful guidelines that we could give to prepare for retirement in a healthy way? We've talked about health in this quite a few times yeah. in this series. Because it's critical. It really is. It's, it's critical, critical to, your emotional, to your emotional well-being. 
But I think it's also critical when it gets when you come down to this approaching retirement, because if you have not taken care of your health to this point, now you're 45, 50, 55, 60 years old. I don't know about you, but when I started hearing hitting those those times, it started hurting. And it's hard to fix. If you're at that age and already in some bad health, to turn that around is like a hundred times more difficult. And the temptation is once I stop being active in law enforcement, I'm gonna back away with my from my health routine. And when you do that, this is when you start gaining weight. This is when you, your muscles start atrophying. This is when your emotional, your mental health starts to suffer because you're not taking care of your physical health. Yeah. So again, that's something that you intentionally have to deal with beforehand. You want to get in that healthy place before the day of retirement. Exactly. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, Charlie, again, I think it's been a very practical, very relevant discussion that we've been sharing together. We need to wrap it up today. And so our encouragement again to our law enforcement brothers and sisters is be strong. And be safe.